Well hello everybody, welcome back to Q&A Wednesday number two. We made it past the first one, this is now the tricky second album. Um, so let's roll the credits whilst I put my glasses on and find the first question. This video is going to be slightly longer than the last one because I've got lots to say on it and we're going to start with a really good question in fact uh, from Duncan Ridgeway. Uh, he sees so many people who purchased a caravan with no experience then ask how to tow the outfit safely. From your vast knowledge, that's questionable, of towing, what's the best advice you would give? And then he's asked another one, which is, and then there's also the people who've got a motor mover fitted, but are put on the pitch with the car, totally wrecking the surrounding areas. Why? Um, let's get that first one out of the way, because that is a really interesting one. And I've seen it, and I suspect if you frequent any online groups like Facebook groups or pages or forums, you would see, and, and I've definitely seen a lot of it, you would see people stating, um, I've just bought a six berth Weisberg, will my Toyota Yaris be okay to pull it, best place for a tow bar. I remember watching, uh, well, uh, going past, and I mentioned Weisberg because that was a, a memory of mine. I remember getting on the M4 here, going down to Bristol, and there was a Weisberg, and Weisbergs are quite big, I think they're eight foot wide vans, and it was a huge caravan, and it was being towed by a Ford Focus with no towing mirrors. And that just, that just frightened the living daylights out of me, you know, but what can you do? So what's the advice I would give? Look, if you're interested in buying a caravan, if you're thinking about buying a caravan, there are a number of things I would suggest you do. Before you commit to picking anything up, join the clubs. It doesn't matter which one it is, in fact join both because I think they're both very relevant and it gives you a great vast range of places to go and visit. Um, join the clubs, sign up for their forums and their member forums specifically. Um, have a look on Facebook for caravanning groups. There's a couple of really good ones, Caravanning for Newbies, um, Caravanners UK, there's a few biggish groups where you can go in and you can basically ask questions and people by and large are quite helpful and quite open with their information. They can share their experiences with you like when they first bought a caravan. I remember when we first bought a caravan the first thing I did before we actually committed to buying anything after we initially said yes we're going to do it. Um, I remember researching for days and days and days about what I could tow with. Was my license good enough to tow with? Was the car that we had good enough for um, a caravan? How heavy is a caravan? I mean, back then I did not know how heavy a caravan likely would have been. So, you know, what I would suggest you do is do your absolute research into your current car, its towing capability, understand what all the weights mean. Um, now I did a video some time ago about understanding car and caravan weights. I'll put a link to that up there and down there. Um, understand what legally you're allowed to do and then understand what technically you're allowed to do with your current vehicle. And then from that you'll have an understanding of what sort of weight and size of caravan you can then go and buy. Um, so that would be my advice from that side of you. Um, the other point is go to a dealership. Now, if you're never going to buy a caravan from a dealership, that's that's your choice. But a dealership, by and large, will be full of information because they sell caravans to a lot of people. They'll be able to tell you whether your car can tow. They'll be able to tell you what sort of tow bar you're likely to have, maybe. But then specifically, they'll be able to point you in the general direction of what caravans they have for sale in that... Uh, weight range and also probably to your budget constraints as well and they'll point you in the right direction and also they might be affiliated with um, a, a training school um, because that's my final point if you are interested in doing it there is no harm and there is no reason why you shouldn't go and get some driver training now Fliss the trailer lady she's just started uploading some fantastic videos about caravanning about hitching up reversing um, about understanding different things about the car and the caravan. My top tips are research heavily, join as many clubs and uh, um, associations as you possibly can, join Facebook groups, or if you know people who've got a caravan, ask questions. You know, there is no such thing as a stupid question. The only stupid question is the question you didn't ask. And also um, maybe sign up for some training, 
about how to maneuver these things onto pitches and how to understand the reversing characteristics. And then finally, go and speak to a dealership because they are full of information and they will look after you. Um, if you go there and you buy your caravan, uh, you'll get a warranty, you get all of those other things as well from a dealership, but they will, number one, they will look after you and make sure that you have got the right caravan for your needs. So this next question is one I wanted to answer some time ago, but I couldn't find it on the day, but I have managed to find it now. I, I get lots of comments and questions, so let's go for it. This one's from the Coffee Vanners. One question, Dan. Um, a lot of people, including us, are thinking about doing mods to the caravan whilst under warranty. We know dealer upgrades don't affect the warranty, but what about electrical of uh, putting screws into panels or water system upgrades? Can you shed some light for Bailey caravans? I can't shed light on Bailey caravans. I can shed light on my personal experience and my personal stance on this very topic. We are doing mods to this caravan. It's a brand new caravan. Well, it's not, it's second hand, but you know what I mean. Um, but we did do mods to our Ridgeway, which was brand new. I did mods to our Luna, which was second hand. Um, this one is used because it was the press van, um, but it's still, you know, it has a warranty. My thought is this. If I do something to the caravan and I cause a problem, that's on me. But if I do something like upgrade the stereo, uh, the, the, the speakers, I'm pretty sure that if I go into a dealership with an ingress issue, they're not going to look to see what speakers are. They're going to look to see what's causing the ingress. The same thing is if I do fiddle around with the water systems here, which I'm doing, and I cause a problem. For example, I drill a hole, uh, I need to drill a hole in the um, water tank here. If I do that and it splits, well, that's on me. I can't really go and claim on a warranty. I think the bottom line which I'm staying here is it's all to do with common sense. Um, I think a dealer and I think a manufacturer will stay, well, if you've done something and you've caused a problem, then it's on you. For instance, the um, the caravan we had last, the Ridgeway, we had the uh, Wi-Fi fitted in and so that needed a hole in the roof. Now that meant that there was no warranty on that hole but because I went to a dealership the dealer then holds responsibility for if there's any issues with that work that they've carried out. So it boils down to if you're prepared to do the modification but be under no illusions that if you break the caravan it's on you then I don't think there is an issue. Of course, if you make major modifications and you need some dealership to come around and sort something out, you need to declare that you've made those mods uh, completely. I like to think that the modifications, bar a couple, are fairly reversible. The water one, 95% of that is reversible. Um, the installation of the Wi-Fi, well, that's not really reversible, but then that's an added benefit for the next owner when we sell it. Um, plus also, I would never cut the hole in the roof myself because I want to maintain some sort of warranty. Um, it really does boil down to common sense. All right, the final question for today. How do you clean under the solar panel on the roof? Um, where did I put it? Uh, just hold on a minute. Okay, so cleaning under the roof is a bit of a challenge. If you've got a panel like ours, which is a Truma 100 watt, it just stands about that proud off of the roof. And usually it just, it just attracts all sorts of green, black, horrible moisture. And it's a bit of a, bit of a pain to get underneath it to clean it. And so we use this figure of eight channel. I hope you can see that. The camera's not gonna, not gonna focus in on it. Um, but we use this. Now, if you've got an awning and an awning skirt, you've probably got some of this. But this is what we use, and I'll show you how I use it. Microfiber cloth, figure of eight channel, and all I do is I feed that in. I leave about that much out the top, and you'll see why in a minute. But then I just wrap it around the, um, the thing. I, I put it in the, the channel because it locks it on and it holds onto it. Um, and then that is basically what I use underneath the panel. Now I said I mentioned I leave a little bit off the top and that's because you, that can bend over and you can apply some, some pressure onto it like so. But that is pretty good. And the great thing as well is you can just take that microfiber cloth off and put another one on if you, you've got some skewer scrubbing to do. Uh, in terms of chemicals, I tend to spray underneath with some black streak remover. 
um, just to you know try and get as much um, chemical bite into the, the the rubbish which is underneath the panel um, and then I just really just go to town on it if you pull it out a bit longer so it's a bit more like so you can obviously you can get a bit more etc onto it but that is what I use I've done that now for a long time um, it was in fact Chloe came up with the idea of doing that um, she said oh you know just wrap a, a, a this around a, a stick uh, and uh, and then we've just said, oh well, no, we've got some figure of eight that'll do, and that'll lock into it. Um, if you find it's f coming off a bit loose, etc., just put a bit of tape around there if need be. But that is basically what I used to clean underneath the solar panel. And there we go. That's the questions and answers done for this week. Thank you very much for tuning in. A um, little bit longer this one, I think, especially from last one. Getting the balance of what's too long, too short, not long enough. Uh, it's a tricky one, actually, um, because I had very conflicting thoughts on the last video. But uh, this is only the number two um, and we'll carry on and we'll try and get it perf perfected a bit better. So there we go. Many thanks for watching, everybody. And uh, we'll see you Friday in the next upload. I don't know what it's going to be because I wanted to film a lot of stuff outside, but it's absolutely tipping down today. We'll see you soon. Bye now.